Thank you. Welcome and thank you for the invitation to talk to you about a way, one of some ways uh, towards a new green urban economy. My name is Lisa Ricker, as already mentioned, and I'm coming from Graz. Graz is the second city in Austria. We have around 290,000 inhabitants. It's situated in a metropolitan area with around 500,000 people. It's as many cities uh, you represent, uh, it's a fast growing city. Uh, we have got lots of sciences, um, students, and also still uh, industries uh, focused. One part of industries, industries is rather much focused on car industries and supporting car, in car industries. And one of our um, cities goals is also to be um, a design, city of design, and to do new technologies and uh, develop them together with the industries. And also economy, uh, in the green economy we have in Styria, we have lots of many enterprises in this term. At the moment we produce about 560 kilos waste per day and uh, per year and person. That means 160,000 tons a year. The recycling rate at the moment is 60% and we bring about 40% to thermal utilization. I want to talk uh, at first uh, about some principles of our waste management. Uh, as I'm responsible for environmental affairs, I'm also responsible for waste management. And I just want to give a short uh, few on our principles, then about the role of our um, agency for environment in dealing with uh, citizens to do a better waste management, and then I want to bring one example uh, that is leading towards the future and we are just beginning to talk about is urban mining. At first, uh, three very important steps by uh, the city that have a long tradition, uh, programs especially for it, uh, made by the agency together with companies and partners. I just mentioned EcoProfit, that's a program for enterprises, tall or small, uh, to improve their production in a more environmental way. Or cradle to cradle, some of you heard about this principle that means to, give, to go into a circular economy within production of products and consumers' uh, uh, consumption. The second very important thing uh, is to give information, information for citizens, neighborhoods, schools, uh, as you know, uh, from your cities. Facilitation and sponsorship um, is, uh, my, um, as I think, a very important thing to give motivation to people to do their own uh, uh, on projects like repair cafes, urban sharing economy. And so I want to tell you about one of the principles that I'm thinking of is one of the most important is to rethink how we consume, how we produce. And then it's very necessary to correspond with those uh, movements, they are going on in our cities, sharing movements uh, like urban gardening or um, movements that go towards a lifestyle that is a new lifestyle and these self-empowering movements are necessary to be seen and also to be invited by the city. So this is like bottom-up strategy. Um, on the other side, it's necessary to invent services for customers and users to facilitate their living forms, like we invented the reuse box. It's a special kind of bringing back uh, things that are still usable. If they are books, if they are uh, clothes, you know, already, or uh, if they are shoes and things you can use, or things like uh, uh, 
for the household and things like that. We do it in cooperation with social companies so that people who are long term uh, unemployed can be employed. We do it together with designers and we do it together with regular trade to bring back where, they can, where the people buy their things, they can bring it back to the trade shops and we will collect them and bring them into the next circle of consumption. For me, uh, and uh, I think that's already mentioned by Stefano, new waste management needs a responsibility for the whole life cycle of products and processes. As we know, 10% of uh, the products and processes are a problem after being produced. 90% of the problems are produced during the production. The goals must be reduction of waste and toxic uh, substances, substances, saving resources, efficiency in resource management. And the sectors with the highest disturbance are nutrition, building, chemistry, assets in service, for example. So now I go over to the question, how do we serve resources in the city? How do we preserve more resources in the city? And I go over to the question of urban mining. We did uh, a big project together with the university and one um, agency to go on to an urban mining cataster. That means that we wanted to find out what kind of resources do we still store or the, do we store until now in our city. We took one part of the city, it's about 300, and 300 houses and quarter of Graz. We did a research project and we did combine data collected over the past 20 years with the geo-information data already stored by the city of Graz. So we took together some data to see the structure and how uh, these houses are composed. In the end, there is a 3D, 3D model of a cadastre for secondary resources. That looks like this. This is, for example, about one house. We know how the material is, from which material this house is built and what material is in there. The next step is to visualize um, how, many, how much wood, how much uh, material of iron, things like beton, but also all uh, these materials like copper and uh, important materials are situated in this area. Now, I have to go back now. Uh, the question about urban mining is to identify at first. The second uh, step is to get out the information about the combinations that are used. I just go to my folder. To identify is the first one. The second is to, um, to value the information, as to value the materials. And the next one is to give information about the buildings. So if you start urban mining in a, in a good designed process, you have, in the end, you have to have information about a good designing of buildings in the future so that you can plan from the beginning on and give, keep the information about, in, about the buildings from the beginning on so that when you rebuild them, when you demont uh, and you dismantle the buildings, you can use the resources again. One minute, okay, that's fine. Um, for me, it's uh, interesting because there was a, st a study also in Augsburg and they asked the question, how can it work? And one of the very critical questions about is uh, how the house owners are gone to a more transparency about the whole uh, information about their houses. So this will be one of the questions, and the other question is how we do it with a rather by bureaucracy way to solve um, or to save all this data in our systems. 
One idea we are just starting now is the idea of urban art mining. As I'm res responsible for culture and environment, we just start um, with the, pro the idea to give secondary resources used by arts to other artists, like uh, to come from a theater if you have uh, the stuff on a stage and it's not gone to the waste as often, it should be used again by other theaters or if you go to the museum and there are lots of materials used for exhibitions, for example, they also often go to the waste directly and in the future we want to, to use each, uh, to get an information in the stage where you can use this material again. The vision is that we use material from deconstruction companies, remnants from trade companies, to, uh, and to give them to artists, art inst institutions, but also to NGOs, as we will need in the future uh, more, um, uh, more intelligent uh, building forms uh, in the city. So I will end at this moment and maybe we will go on and discuss this topic. Thank you. Thanks also to Lisa. And again, does anybody have immediate questions to Lisa for her to consider before she will then later be given an opportunity to respond? Anybody wants to dig into something she said more deeply and wants her to explain more about that? Yes, please. Thank you. My name is Notger Schweigert. I'm from Berlin and a spokesman for cultural and creative industries for us Greens. And I was especially interested in urban art mining and wondered how this structure is. How do you organize it? Do you have a central space where you collect uh, sets that are left from theaters and so on? So I would be okay. interested to hear more about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Not for the time being. Then we have our third presenter, that is Dirk Holemans. Uh, Dirk is a think tanker right now, holding degrees in bioengineering, philosophy, and economy. He works for the green Belgian think tank Oikos. Uh, he's been a researcher and lecturer at several universities. He does hold office on a local level uh, in Ghent in Belgium, but he's also been a member of the Flemish parliament, so he knows these issues from different angles. Please. 